We just got a new subscriber. Welcome, everybody, to the Thursday night CBSI Bolo Show. I'm your host, Brian Boom Boom Wood, and tonight we're going to be talking about comics and stuff. Not just any comics, but the comics that came out this week and the CBSI Bolo list. With me, as always, is my co host, Jack DeMeo, a.k.a. Mr. Bolo. What's going on, Jack? Brian, I can't even keep a straight face, man. I'm excited to be here. CBSI Bolo Show, the Thursday night ritual. It's been going on since January, and we have no plans of stopping. Um, like, like Brian mentioned, it's uh, a whole nother new comic book day just passed us yesterday. So we got a whole new list of new comic book releases, hot variants, books buzzing with readers, and a couple first appearances to talk about. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> so, yeah, bring us both in here on screen. <clears throat> I kind of thought maybe we could do the whole show like that, but, you know, people might get the wrong impression or, you know, I don't think the energy would carry over. But first of all, I want to thank <laughs> everyone that's joining us in the chat right now. This is a live premiere. We are recording this Wednesday night, but premiering it Thursday night. So those of you joining us during that premiere, thanks for being in that live chat. And those watching on the replay, thanks for watching on the replay as well. And if you listen to the audio version on the podcast, thank you for listening there. But it's also important to note that, this show does have a sponsor, Nick Dortman at SlabbedHeroes.com. Make sure you guys check them out for guaranteed modern 9.8s at a great price, SlabbedHeroes.com. So, <clears throat> getting, I'm starting to get a little bit of cold, so a little excuse me there. <clears throat> but, great week for comics. There were some good books that came out, but last night, during the Hot and Cold show, if you're not familiar with that show, we cover the Hot and Cold market trends. We have picks from CBSI, but we also have other YouTubers that have comic book channels. They provide picks for us. Tell us what's hot, what's cold in the comic market. Why am I telling you about this? Because during last night's show, we talked about a brand new comicbookinvest.com exclusive variant with Mad Cave Studios. And what was that variant, Jack? We're talking about Wolven Heart number one from Mad Cave Studios. We're talking about a classic old school horror monster hunter monster slayer story coming from mad cave who will always bring like a diverse mix of storytelling from their portfolio and we have an exclusive variant courtesy of cbsi and comicbookinvest.com which is on sale tonight um just like all of our other cbsi variants we're using the bolo show to kick off this sales period it is a pre-order this book uh comes out i believe november the 4th so we got a little bit of leeway, a little bit of runtime for this one. But um, or excuse me, October the 30th. October the 30th, this one drops. This is a perfect Halloween release. But as you can see with the book on the screen, um, we have a classic homage coming from Mad Cave Studios. Tomb of Dracula number 10, the first appearance of Blade, homaged right here from Mad Cave Studios. And what I really love about this cover is it's not one of those like direct homages, right? It, it homages the theme of the cover. But it's not copying everything about that original cover. Uh, Mauricio Villanueva, who you may recognize that name. And if you don't, I'm telling you, get to know it now. He's a rising star. But he did our other two Mad Cave Studios variants. He did our Knights of the Golden Sun variant and our Honor and Curse variant. And the Honor and Curse variant is actually still available at comicbookinvest.com. We still have some copies left. But his art has been extremely well received by CBSI Nation and the Simpleman's Comics fam. And we knew that he would do this homage justice. So what we did with this one is we're bringing you two versions. First off, we have the trade dress version, which has that classic word bubble style that that Tomb of Dracula number 10 had. And we have an exclusive collector's edition virgin cover that is extremely limited. Now, how limited? Well, these two books are going to be released in two different ways. The trade dress will be released by itself for $17 plus shipping. And there will only be 100 copies of this book put out to the public just as a individual trade dress. But then we will take 50 more copies, partner them with that virgin, and they will be on sale for $50. So there is only 50 copies of the virgin cover that will be released to the public. The total print run on these two books is 200 and 100. So we're talking extremely, extremely limited. That is our run on these books. Um, 
Mad Cave Studios will have some. We'll have some for uh, um, our writer comps. But to the market, we are going to release 150 of the trade dress and just 50 of the Virgin. So this is extremely limited. Um, think about our Knights of the Golden Sun release. When we dropped that Virgin Collector's Edition, it went quickly. Um, we expect to see that uh, with this book. This is a book that has a lot of buzz. There's a, a free sneak preview of Woven Heart that's been going around for about a month that has gotten a ton of reader buzz. Uh, people are excited about this series. So, and we're excited to get to bring not just another CBSI variant and Mad Cave collaboration, but this awesome Tomb of Dracula number 10 homage, first appearance of Blade. Just one of the hottest books on the secondary market. And uh, when we came up with this homage idea, there was only one out there. And now you see in the market, there's been a couple announced uh, by other variant producers since we've announced ours. So I think that it's a very timely release and one we're excited to release to the public. And again, it's available now from comicbookinvest.com. $17 if you just want that trade dress version. Uh, $50 if you want the trade dress and the homage. And don't forget, whenever you get a variant from comicbookinvest.com, CBSI, you are getting the absolute highest quality. I'm talking uh, Mylar bags. Um, I'm talking um, the halfback boards. I'm talking the CBSI hand-numbered sticker of authenticity. I'm talking Gemini mailers between cardboard getting shipped to you in the condition it was intended to be as well as the charitable aspect, because of course, $2 of every purchase goes to a special charity. Um, with this one, we are going to do, uh, again, St. Jude's Children's Hospital, um, which is probably one of the, just the most above board, highest quality charities that is out there, um, taking care of kids, making sure that if kids get sick, that all of the family's expenses are covered so that all they have to worry about is being there for their loved one um, in a time of crisis and not have to worry about those costly bills. So it's a great charity, one that we support, and uh, we're happy to be able to do whatever part we can to kick a little something um, their way. So again, uh, thank you everybody who has supported our very program in the past. We are excited to release this one tonight. And Brian mentioned the Hot and Cold Show where we talked about doing this. If you watched the Hot and Cold Show last night, we also unveiled our next variant. We got ahead of the game a little bit and unveiled our Vault Vintage variant, which is now live on Instagram. Um, you can check that out. Take a look at that one. That's Heist from Vault. Um, and we will be unveiling that one soon right here on the CBSI Bolo Show. But right now, you're going to want to make sure, wait till after the show, open up another tab, do what you got to do. But get that uh, Wolven Heart variant from Mad Cave Studios at comicbookinvest.com now. So that's right. Fantastic variant, comicbookinvest.com. But what we're here for is the bolo list. And like we always say, if this is your first time here, first thing first, please consider subscribing so that way you don't ever miss a future video on this channel. But also, what is the bolo list exactly? It's the be on the lookout list where Jack creates this list from you the viewers and all the other comic enthusiasts it covers first appearances reader buzz variant buzz and then we have a long-term play at the end how this show works while it might be while a title might be listed multiple times on the list we cover it once on the show so if it's covered in first appearance reader buzz or variant buzz if we cover it once there we don't cover it again in the other sections that it's on the list but we're going to start right now with the first appearances for this week And our first appearance is Fantastic Four number 15. And this is what, the Unparalleled team? Right, the, t the Unparalleled team. Um, now, again, CBSI Nation, Simpleman's Comics family, you guys know how I feel about team appearances. Um, but this seems to be a more organic first appearance. Um, it's hard to tell. It has very little buzz. The, uh, the spoiler variant all the way on the right had a little bit of heat on it. Um, didn't really sell out from most places. Um, did see a little bit of buzz, uh, the way that most of these like spoiler classified variants tend to kind of get, but, um, these fantastic four books have been putting out quite a few first appearances. We haven't seen any take off 
in the market yet. But it's important to note the Fantastic Four are coming to the MCU. We don't know where they're going to pull source material from. A lot of people are really heavily banking on the kind of classic, you know, golden age, silver age type stories. I think that it's it's quite possible we may see um, some of these modern characters appear. So, you know, it's one of those $4 crapshoots. You grab a $4 book, you stick them in a short box, may turn into something, may not. But if you read this book, let us know um, what you thought of the unparalleled, uh, the team that first appears in this book. And if you grab that uh, spoiler variant with the unparalleled trade dress and the team on the cover. And I will say, if they do ever take off, that would be the one to get. Right. I'm not a big fan of those Mary Jane variants, but if you're a fan of J. Scott Campbell and one of those completionists, there is that yeah. J. Scott Campbell Mary Jane variant for it as well. All these were cover price, right? Right, all cover price variants. So that's going to wrap up first appearance section. We had a short first appearance section. We did have one more on the list, but we're going to cover that one later. But for now, we are going right into the Reader Buzz. And our first comic on the Reader Buzz section this week is Vampire State Building number one. I wasn't big on this book. There was a lot of Reader Buzz, a lot of hype, especially around Charlie Adler. And now that Walking Dead is done. To me, looking at the premise, looking at the covers, it reminded me of kind of like a V Wars type comic book. So I kind of shied away from it. Yeah, and so I, I toyed with this one. Like, is this one possibly the long term play of the week? My initial reaction, Brian, was very similar to yours, where I wasn't that hype about this book. But again, this is not my show, it's not my list. Um, this is you guys, the, the comic purchasing audience, and how do you guys feel about it? You guys seem to be all over this book. Every cover sold out at Midtown. Um, again, Midtown is not like the gauge. You want to be careful with that. Um, there's a lot of retail stores out there. But the point is the book was selling briskly. It's from a small new publisher of Blaze Comics. Um, I'm always weary of these like small boutique shops that open up. And you know what else, Brian? You can tell how they were trying to sell this book when you look at like the top part of the trade dress there where it says from Walking the creator of The Walking yeah. Dead. Um, they really want to hammer that home to you and make you believe like comparison-wise you're buying that next Walking Dead. Now, I will say they did a great job with covers. Um, that second cover from the left, you've got an in Hyuk Lee cover. Um, obviously, you're talking about a red-hot cover artist. On the far right, you get almost like a vault vintage feeling um infinity gauntlet number one yeah except that seems like a cover that would be on the netflix show nailed it because i don't you can tell what it's an homage of i just don't think it's very i don't i don't like it yeah I, and i would i would agree i think nailed if it. i was if i was going for this one um the one that i would go for is without a doubt that in Lee. Also, um, Sad Lemon Comics released a uh, Tomb of Dracula number 10. I mentioned when we talked about our Tomb of Dracula homage that there were other uh, brands releasing Tomb of Dracula homages. They release a Tomb of Dracula homage that's done pretty well, selling for about $30. So I think that uh, limited to 500 So I think that there's definitely buzz on this series. I think there were people that were anticipating, though, Brian, this being like a $15, $20 book out the gate because of the buzz. It seems like that's not really the case. Cover price plus shipping, which, again, we talk about this. If a book's selling briskly on eBay for cover price plus shipping, it's technically selling like double cover. Um, So you kind of got to give it a bit of credit for that. But at the same point, um, the reason I didn't put this as my long-term play is – and again, if you read this book, let me know. Let me know if I'm maybe I'm maybe I'm off with this. And I'll be I'll be honest with you guys, man. We talk about transparency on this channel, right, Brian? I, I struggled with a long term play this week. I struggled with what book. I don't know. The one that you picked was the one that I would have picked. Yeah, it, I struggled with which book. Um, and really, I got sold on the one I picked. Um, a couple members of the Sim- Simplements Comics Patreon family, who I'll talk about later, um, sold me on that that pick, but. Um, this one, right, you're looking at, I get what you're saying, where you get kind of like that V Wars, maybe the strain. I was going to say, that's what I was going to say. They're selling it as The Walking Dead, but I see it as the strain. But see, even in the strain, you had like a more complex story. This whole thing takes place in the Empire State Building. So, like, how long of a show could you really have? It's like a vampire breakfast club. 
Yeah, yeah. It really uh, it, it seems limited to me. Um, but again, people were all over it. It's not my place to judge it. Uh, buy what you like. And people were all over this one. I just hope people were over all over it because they were you know interested in the story and not like getting caught up in the Charlie walking dead creator type thing because not every robert kirkman property and robert kirkman is definitely like the eastman to laird kind of thing in the walking dead duo um not every robert kirkman copy uh, uh property automatically takes off yeah i mean i like charlie adler's art but to me it's iconic to walking dead so mm-hmm. i always will relate to the walking dead and i don't know we always say buy what you like so i didn't buy this one but we're going to yeah. move right on into the next book in the reader buzz. And I did buy this book because I do like it. And we're talking about Canto number five. This is the penultimate issue, right? Right. Um, I was a little surprised that this one didn't do a little better secondary market-wise. But you know what? I just think it's at a point where people have moved on from Canto beyond the reader buzz. Especially I with think, that Ben Bishop cover, right? Yeah. And I think I'm a homer, yeah. man. I, and I think, I think everybody in the channel knows I love Ben Bishop. Uh, shout out to Ben Bishop. Um, I know he's watched our programming before. Um, I've talked to him at conventions. Uh, he's a good dude. He's a young dude. I thought that's the thing about Ben Bishop, man. He's so young. He's like got time to really reach the levels that I think he's going to reach. He's a great artist. And he's one of those artists who like came up from the bottom so, like, he was that – you know when you go to the conventions, Brian, and you got those guys who are just doing art and you don't know who they are. They're not attached to any comic and they're just doing, like, cool prints and homages. He was that guy. He was doing Ninja Turtle homage is. And Eastman walked by and was like, that's amazing. You want to actually do a turtle comic. Like, that's kind of like the comics American dream, right? So um, I like Ben Bishop. I've been following him since he, he, got, he began. So I was hyped for this one, but I just think um, that – kind of like series buzz has died down a bit not anything against canto just kind of where series go when they reach a certain level um but i think that that bodes well for people who are putting sets together readers you know brian you and i have felt good about a possibility of a future announcement one day as far as optioning something like that um if that comes to pass you know, I think these last couple issues, that issue five, issue six, I think you could be looking at smaller print runs than we were looking at kind of not in the beginning. Obviously, issue one and issue two had small print runs, but then issue three and four were larger print runs. So we'll have to wait and see. Another thing that I think that affected this variant is the pricing games that a lot of retailers play. Like we've talked about Midtown Comics again, um, who instead of pricing this at like the 850 that they started pricing the series – uh, incentives at had this one at seventeen dollars, which I think scares people off a bit because you've already eaten up kind of like half their profit right there. So I think that kind of makes a difference. I think I, I I'm glad to see buyers rebelling against paying those like overpriced variant prices. Yeah, so I'm still a fan of Canto. Love this story. Drew Zucker, the artist, actually has some sweet New York Comic Con variants out this weekend. So if you're at New York Comic Con, make sure you check out their booth. But we're going to move into the next one on the reader buzz. And it is Star Wars Return to Vader's Castle number one. This had, what, four covers to it with an incentive. Was I forget what the ratio was. I think it was like one in 10, one in 25. But be honest with you, the incentives, they're not on the variant buzz section for a reason. Like they really didn't have any buzz. But I'm stunned to see cover A and cover B sell out at most large retailers. Well, it's um, that Frank Avia cover, right? Yeah, but you know what, Brian? This is like a volume two. This yeah. is not – this is this – volume one had no heat on it. This I can't explain, guys. I really can't explain. I think it might have been maybe people picked up the trade and really liked it. Um, maybe it was a slow mover because it was a reader buzz thing. Um, I agree. Frank Avia, you know, he. this is kind of like a – kind of dark horror version of Star Wars because it focuses on Vader and the the villains of the Star Wars universe. But, man, um, this one sold out quickly. Like, I'm talking about, like, last week when it got announced uh, and put up on, like, well, not announced, but when it got put up for sale on, like, Midtown and places like that, um, it was gone, TFAW. So, I don't know. This one, this one caught me a little bit off guard. I, do I think it's going to have major secondary market value? No. But uh, from a reader bus perspective, clearly people are into this series. I mean, it's just interesting that it hasn't translated to the variants. 
Exactly. And the next one on the Reader Buzz this week was from new comic from Image, and we're talking about Nomen Omen, right? I liked the Becky Cloonan cover for this, so that's the one that I picked up, which is the third one from the left. Yeah, I think the Becky Cloonan cover is the far superior cover of any of the covers. Um, obviously, Image is putting some money into this. We see the four covers, which you don't always see um, in, in Image releases. Now, there are certainly several releases that do this. You'll see that with, like, the Mark Miller releases, things like that. But um, this is a book, another book, where I think has an opportunity to be a long-term winner. Um, it, it's a story that I think, from the solicit, sounds certainly interesting. Um, you know, it, it's, it teases more than it gives information. Um, but there was some buzz on this one. There's a lot of people behind this one. Um, a lot of people who were kind of championing this book. Um, it was brought to my attention today that it was the key collector pick of the week. So um, there's definitely some people who are behind this book as a long-term spec play. A lot of image series is, man, you got to buy and hold. You know, it seems like series is either blow up immediately um, or you got to have patience with them and wait and see if you can get um, some sense of a uh, – a option, but I've heard rumors of this one being talked about in option circles already. So we'll have to wait and see. Um, I agree that the Becky Cloonan cover is probably the best cover, but it's like talk about a lot of times when a book gets optioned, it's actually cover A that pops off because that's what the mainstream media sites show. Um, so that's tough. But I, the cover I would probably avoid then would be cover B. Um, I think cover C is the most attractive. Cover A is hedges your bets. Um, Blank variants. I always blank variants with indie books. The only good thing I can say is there if it ends up becoming like a major hit and it's like a major series, they're probably not printed in huge quantity. But um, blank to blank to me is usually like a PC book that you want to take and get one of your favorite artists to do a sketch, especially yeah. if you can get it witnessed. But yeah, unless there's those ones where like you find out that's a super low print run or half of them got destroyed, like that walking dead blank that was popular for a while. The rat Queens blank that was, pop, you know, when we're, especially if we're talking image type books, but right, right. It's, it's one thing if we're talking Spider-Man, you know, I mean, yeah. people get Spider-Man sketches all day, but, um, a book like this, if you went to a convention, unless you're bringing it to the creators, they may not even be familiar with the characters to be able to give you a sketch on this right now. So yeah, just take it to them and have them sketch Batman. <laughs> it's it's funny it's funny you say that I have a uh, a redneck number three convention blank variant from Image where Donny Cates drew a vampire Batman on the cover. Yeah. Right. So the next book on the Reader Buzz was one a lot of people were excited for, and that was Dead Eyes. Yeah, you and I, you know, we're not the biggest uh, proponents of this book, um, are we, Brian? It's no. Just, you know, the whole. Um, of course, there was the whole dead rabbit before this, and now we got dead eyes. But shout out to Dan Piercy. He, he's a big uh, proponent of this book. Yep. Yep. Dan Piercy, D. Piercy's comics, uh, Mr. Confrontational Comics himself. Uh, without a doubt, uh, what a character, what a funny guy. But um, miss him on the channel. But he, he has definitely been a big fan of this one. Um, it's a book I'm interested to read because I didn't read Dead Rabbit when it was first out and people were telling me, like, you got to read it. And then it got canceled. And I was like, yes, yeah, I guess I didn't need to read it. And now it's back. Um, I, we've talked about this on the channel several times, so I'll, I'll be brief with it. But, you know, from a speculation perspective, I don't know, because we've seen before when they retitle books, it kind of hurts both the old title and the new title. Um, and. I think that it, for a long-term play, I would say the new title has more legs because if they do a movie, they're not going to call it Dead Rabbit. So um, at least I wouldn't think. Yeah. Now, well, it was, it was kinked because of like copyright, right, for the Dead Rabbit? Well, right. Well, that's the thing is what if yeah. the, the co copyright is only held for publishing? Yeah. Then theoretically they could call the movie Dead Rabbit. Yeah. Um, if they wanted to, so then that that's all complicated. So you just don't know where you spec. Um, but it's interesting. Image doesn't do a lot of incentive variants. We don't know. We saw a million for Spawn, but they don't do a ton of these like one in ten, one in twenty, one in twenty-five type stuff. And they have this Phil Noto one in ten variant. 
Which is just interesting to me. It means that they were going the extra mile to try to sell this issue. Yeah. Another one. Why would you like? I didn't. I didn't buy this, but anxious to know if you guys have read this. What do you guys think about this? And also, like we always say, especially when we used to say in the live, if you have a YouTube channel, make sure you put it in the chat. If you guys are in the chat right now, especially I know there's people out there that probably did reviews on this book. If you did a review video, let people know to check out your channel so they can see the review that you did for this book or any of the books actually that we cover Definitely. in this Bolo show. One thing we do like to point out is we're starting to see that full cycle take spin where. We're seeing the books that we started to discuss in the first last call show. So you're starting to see what we offered. We were we were suggesting for to get your pre-orders in for final order cutoff. We're now starting to see them be released. So now it's going to be anxious to see how those trends, what rises, what doesn't, what stunk, what's a great read. But either way, that's what makes this whole thing fun for us especially. With that being said, we're going to move into the next book on the reader buzz. And we're talking about Absolute Carnage, Immortal Hulk number one. I think this is probably one of the hotter books this week, especially with that Dale Keown variant. But what do you think about this? Right. Um, the From the cover A, from a reader perspective, um, we've been you know getting a lot of reports that it was a fun read. Uh, people enjoyed it. Uh, but not an advanced the story kind of book. Uh, really, this is all about, about that 1 in 25 incentive. Right. Um, I, I will say before you, let you, I'm gonna let you finish, but I yeah, will say one that I didn't include was there was a version of that Enhiak leave yes. cover as well. It's same art, so I just kept it off. But it's interesting that the version at one in one hundred is selling around what the one in twenty five is selling in like nine six condition. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of it seems to be a lot of it listed on eBay nine zero and nine two one in twenty five. So I think there was some condition issues out there. Um, but even those are selling briskly at 50 to 60. So, um, and it's funny that the one in 50 in Yuckley selling for half what the one in 25 is selling for a reverse of what you would typically expect. Um, and not to like knock the art on the one in 25, but I don't think it's because the art is so stellar on the one in 25. I know that people will probably disagree with me, but I think it's the character. Yeah. Um, the venomized Hulk got so much heat in the last week. Um, since that classified design variant got released, um, and then Donny Cates fought for, you know, the rights to that being a first appearance, and you know, um, arguing that, you know, what ifs don't count, and that whole debate, and uh, so I think that kept that this book as soon as that whole topic of discussion came up, this book then got its cover released and immediately became like the topic of speculation conversation. So this is when you just saw coming, man. We just knew like, if you can get your hands on this one, it's going to be, it's going to be a winner. Um, Mel V from the mighty Mel V YouTube channel, friend of the channel. He told me this morning when he was at Midtown, they had stacks of that 125. So they were all over that one. Um, they were charging $34, which is obviously an upcharge over ratio, but certainly one you could still make money on. You'd be making more than double your money buying them at $34. So that's pretty interesting. But I think they were prepared for NYCC weekend. But, I, yeah, and you also saw heavy listings, higher listings of that on eBay this weekend. And I think because there's some shops that saw that, I saw people mentioning on Instagram and stuff that they had pre-ordered that one in 25 and they were getting their orders canceled. Yes, that, and it's, it, that's always terrible to see. Um, we've talked about this on the channel before. Um, I, you know, I hate when we get that argument, Brian. Well, oh, you know, that's just stores being capitalistic and playing, you know, the, getting, you know, playing with the market. No, I mean, fine, if that's what you want to call it. But it, by not, I, I call it honor commitments. Unless someone truly got allocated copies. I mean, there's right. stuff like that happens. I, it, it's, right. But, but either you, way, you, I mean, if they're if, if they're doing it to, yeah, make more money, I mean, there's one thing to make money, but also it's also truthful to honor commitments that if you sold it, honor that commitment that you sold it for. Right. I, I'm sorry, but that I'd rather sell this book if I made a commitment for $25 because my beef would be that that $50 that I could make over and above what I sold that for, I'll make tenfold over – by that customer feeling so enriched that he was able to purchase that book and that I honored it for him or her that they would be back shopping with me again in the future. 
if you're looking to sell comics, play the long game. That's all we can advocate. You know, Brian and I have talked about that consistently. Like, don't play the short game. Don't penny pinch your customers because you won't have customers. Yeah. But then again, I don't own a comic book store. I work in IT. So <laughs> either way, the next book that we're going to have is Contagion Number 1. This is another book that we actually talked about on the last call. This was one of our, like, reader picks, right? Right. This is still one that I'm very interested to read. Um, another one that I feel like could be like, you know, it could it could be have legs down the road because it didn't have a lot of buzz. Like people were interested to read it, but it just didn't take off the way I think Marvel would have hoped. It didn't have like that deceased hype, which is what it gets constantly compared to. Um, it's not that I'm saying that there could be a movie, but I guess it's it is possible. But um, I think it's more one of those things with this book where if, if this ends up kind of developing reader buzz as it goes, this could be one of those like classic Marvel miniseries. Remember Marvel Zombies. Marvel Zombies is now big money. Um, is something that people really like look at as like a classic Marvel series. But it, it wasn't necessarily that way upon release. So I wonder... And I, again, I'm not saying it is. I'm just kind of wondering out loud if this could get to that level where people feel that way about this series. And I think this is going to be, honestly, I think this is going to be discount bin fodder, these these Contagion books. I think you're going to be able to get these books um, under cover price or no more than cover price um, for quite some time. And that could change down the road. Um, as people get exposed to this series, horror is hot. You just never know. Um, and it could be as the Disney Plus app develops, if Marvel wants to get more into like animated features, I think stories like this are prime for animated features. Yeah, when I first saw the cover A of it, it was Marvel, but it reminded me of the DC book that was out not too long ago called Damage. That's just from the cover and the art alone with you know the person on it, but... Well, I think that's part of what hurts this book is the thing as like the – I mean I hate to say it, but the Fantastic Four just isn't hot. Yeah. Um, so putting the thing as the cover character for the first book – and this is a story that like sweeps the Marvel Universe. If this would have had say Deadpool or you know, even the Hulk or um, I think Moon Knight's on a cover, if they would have done something like that for issue number one – um, you might have seen more heat on the series. I agree. And with that, we're going to move on into the next book on the Reader Buzz, which was that Marvel Comics 1001. Right. So, you know, I honestly think there's some sleeper stuff going on here, Brian, with uh, with Marvel Comics, not the publisher in general, but these, these that, series. that cover that has the one in the middle on the bottom, right? Right, because we saw the Eternity Mask in the first issue. Um, now this, you know, Masked Raider kind of character. Um, it really not being talked about in the market. I mean, I, you hear some people bring it up, but it's it's not being talked about. And you got to believe with the level of marketing Marvel's putting into this series that there's something to this, right? And this could be one of those ones that has people scrambling for back issues later. Yeah, I kind of... And my own selfish reasons. I mean, I don't really wish for this season to tank, but I still want to copy that D23 Expo variant for the yes. 1000 issue. So I at least want that issue to drop enough to where I can get it for a decent price. But if it goes up, kudos. And I mean, I, I say I'm being selfish. I would like to get it cheap, but I always see Love Comics be successful. So yeah, I just rambled there. So we're just going to move on. <laughs> yeah fun day but next one we have immortal hulk number 24 this is right. like crazy because you know the next issues of seems to be a really big issue as well right so this is supposed to be that penultimate issue um not we thought for the series now it looks like just for this giant right. first 25 issue arc um a lot of reader buzz on this one um it, you know, I feel like every week we could put Immortal Hulk in here. This is just, this has been maybe, I'd say revolutionary for the character of the Incredible Hulk. Yeah. You know, to have no a series. No one's been this excited about a, a Hulk uh, self-titled series 
as they have with the way Al Ewing's been writing this. And that's what I was about to say. I think it's revolutionary for Al Ewing because, yes, Al Ewing had his supporters. But think about how Al Ewing is going to be able to parlay this into his next kind of writing endeavor. We've posed the question on several contestants like this, like, who would you want to see write Venom? Yeah. Or who would you want to see write Thor next? And Al Ewing's name starts to come up now. But I would venture a guess that that wasn't the case two years ago, three years ago. No, uh, I did like um, No Surrender right before this that led yep. into it and everything. But, yeah, he's done a phenomenal job writing this. And this is one that we always point back to. This is one that built steam through reader buzz, it seems. And yeah, you had those gorgeous Alex Ross covers, which kind of got you into the door. But then the Al Ewing story is what, you know, once you start reading, and it kind of got you hooked. And, well, what I love is that this whole storyline actually took place in essentially three different comic series because – Civil War two number three, where you have the death of you know Bruce Banner and Hulk, um, Avengers six eighty two, which I don't care what you want to tell me is the first appearance of Mortal Hulk because it says Mortal Hulk on it, but um, you know where Hulk kind of like rises, and then six eighty four with that you know gorgeous Mark Brooks cover that most people recognize as the first Immortal Hulk, and um, leading into this series, it just. Um, you know, it's it's car- the heat has carried on. I think that that Civil War uh, two two number three would be more valuable if it wasn't such a large print run on that book. But um, you know, just still it's still an important book, still a key book, just not a key book that's going to be probably valuable at any time. Um, and I think Avengers six eighty two and six eighty four, if we were talking hot and cold show right now, probably are cold right now. They've dropped a bit. Um, and that just makes them good buys as there's rumors that maybe Marvel will go Immortal Hulk at some point in the MCU. And I could see that just because... They want I mean, Professor Hulk. <laughs> right. And you can't deny the popularity of this series, right? I mean, we talked about this before, but Hulk's never been a big seller for Marvel. So this has been major for them. 24 issues in. The 25th issue has a ton of um, heat on it. Um, and I'll say another channel sponsor. Be on the lookout for that. Mortal Hulk 25, Frankie's Comics variant, which has not yet been announced, but is on the way. Yes. Then the next book on the Reader Buzz. These books we talk about every week, one or the other. And that is the Jonathan Hickman. And here we have House of X number six. Right. House of X number six. It just, again, huge, huge buzz for this series. Uh, People are loving it. Especially that foreshadow variant, right? Yeah, the foreshadow variant Again, whether we call them classified, whether we call them spoiler variants, whether we call them foreshadow variants, any of those variants where we don't know what's going to be on the cover, then it gets revealed. That gets a lot of buzz. But the foreshadow variant, I think, specifically is because it's got a character on the cover in Omega Red that is an absolute fan favorite. People have been you know, clamoring for Omega Red for a larger role in the publishing side, and people want to see Omega Red in the movie. If I was personally in charge of the MCU, Omega Red would be my first choice for a villain for the X-Men because I just think that that's what this this age group wants. Um, and we see even X-Men number fours from 1991 uh, or 1992 on the rise. So, you know, clearly uh, this is a character with buzz that people are all over. Um, we're also seeing Apocalypse getting kind of a resurgence in his first appearances with X Factor 5 and 6. We're seeing X Factor 15 with the Horsemen of the Apocalypse getting a resurgence. But you know what? We Every time an issue comes out, it feels like five or six X-Men back issues pop off. So that's what's been great. This has been true organic reader buzz. If, it, if Immortal Hulk had it, um, House of X and Powers of X have taken it to the next level. Right. Yeah, like we said, every week we're talking about House of X and Powers of X. But... One that we don't talk about every week, but we do talk about when they do come out, and that's Dead End Kids. We have issue number three, but they also had, was it a second print? Was the second print for number two came out this week as well? Yep, yep. Dead End Kids, the second print for number two. Um, same cover art. I'm a little disappointed in that. but And uh, and number three, the first print came out. No, now, number three has been selling for $30 in pre-sale. That has dropped a bit, down to about 15 but still, you're looking at three issues that 
easily went over ten dollars an issue um, upon release. That would probably cost you um, for the set forty to sixty dollars. Um, just incredible, just incredible from a source point press release from a small press publisher um, to have that kind of buzz. Shout out to Frank Gogol, a uh, good dude out here grinding. We've talked about it. he's the reason why we do things like one of the reasons why we do things like the Last Call Show because I, I've, I've used his name in reference when I we push back on some of the spec you haters and we say you know. Um, your speculation dollars are not more important than a guy who is not do, able to do this yet full time because he's selling 2,000 copies of his book. If he could sell 4,000 copies of his book, that makes a bigger impact for him um, and his ability to then create more work, which then you can make money off of, than it ever would be um, for you to make an extra $5 on the book. So, and I, again, I, I don't even buy that whole argument that we're pushing up print runs, but. It, you know, even if we did, that's one of the reasons why we do it. Um, so, you know, I'm happy to see this book be successful. And we talked about New York Comic Con. If you're at New York Comic Con this weekend, stop by the Source Point Press booth. There's a Dead End Kids number one uh, New York Comic Con variant, twenty dollars. Sure to get some heat, I would imagine. I would really imagine that 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 that's twenty dollars well spent. Right, and, and talk to all the other Source Point Press guys. I know Stan Kanopka's there as well. He writes The Rejected. Um, is Bob Sally there? I forget. Who wrote, I believe Ogre? so, yeah. Yeah, yeah I believe so because I think he's, I think he's prom promoing Ogres, the second yeah. volume. So definitely check out Source Point Press booth. And that wraps up the Reader Buzz. Bzz. X, I'll tell you, before we get into the next section, um, and while we're on the topic of the um, – Kind of the cyclical nature now of us talking after the last call show. Um, there's a couple books, Brian, we talked about in the last call show that ended up not kind of having the buzz when it came out. And the one that comes to mind for me is Doctor Strange 20. Right. So Doctor Strange 20 was a book we talked about in the pre-FOC show. Looked like maybe there's a death of Doctor Strange or something big. And the big reveal was just simply that he gets his ability to be a surgeon -ic. <laughs> so that's that's the funny thing about it is, you know, when you're purely speculating, when we're doing the last call show, we're giving you what we see, um, what we can read, what we can tell our experience. But, I mean, we are not looking through a crystal ball. We don't know. Um, so it, it's always funny, some of that backlash for that. But that was one that was sort of underwhelming. And then I would say Justice League 33 was the big, like, winner versus – you know, that was not a book we highlighted on the pre-FOC show. It wasn't one of our top ten. Um, but we see the combination of all the different monitors into one giant monitor. So I guess it's a first a first appearance um, of a new character. And that had some buzz today. Um, Scott Snyder's killing it on that series. So it's real interesting. Um, it's going to be fun to watch from week to week as we are able to compare the last call show from three weeks ago to the Bolo Show this week. Definitely. And shout out to my LCS Third Eye Comics. Not the small store where I shop at, but their big main flagship store. They just had a signing with Scott Snyder. They also have a signing with Tom King coming up. So shout That's out big. to Third Eye Comics. And we're going to go into now the variant mode section. Starting with Deceased number five. This is like probably one of my favorite covers. I mean, you can look at it and automatically know it's Francesco Mattina, but I'm kind of been dying on the whole Harley craze. But I love this cover. Yeah, this one, um, this one probably had the most buzz. I like the Joker cover, um, and I also like the Wonder Woman cover. But this is the one that just seems to stand out the most with with collectors. Now, again, we haven't seen these like pop off in the secondary market. A lot of PC pickups for people, but I think Deceased, similar to what I talked about with Contagion except probably more solidly so, has a solid chance at some long-term speculation gains. Um, we've talked about this on the channel. Like I've put together some Matina sets. I've put together some of those um, horror movie homage sets, although I will say those got worse as that. I thought the early ones were better than the later ones. But uh, Matina was consistent, I think, all the way through. Um, I think he did a great job with these, these uh, zombified versions of these uh major dc characters and another thing to point out before we move on is 
Um, there some cover Bs that came out this weekend were deceased variants as well. Harley Quinn 66 had a deceased variant. Green Lantern 12 had a deceased variant. Batman 80 had a deceased variant um, that may have slipped under the radar for people. So if you're all over that deceased stuff, that's something to check out. Yeah, these are the type books, we've kind of mentioned it before, that if they don't sell like you want, they're going to sit there and when I, you find them in those TFAW sales or those Midtown sales, buy up a couple copies, especially when you get them like 70% off or however those sales are. That's when I usually will stock up on some of these just because the cover's just too great for me to pass up on, especially for cheap. Not to not like they're expensive now. I mean, they're what, cover price or dollar more if they're card stock or whatever it is, but... Next one we're going to talk about for the variant buzz is something is killing the children. This is the fourth print for issue number one. Yeah, so again, continuing to sell. Um, this is not moving on the secondary market the way some of the other ones were, but that's by design. This this is one where they allowed retailers to kind of fill their orders who missed out on some of the other ones. Um, so this is meant to be in shops for readers. When uh, when Boom did that interview with bleeding cool and they kind of explained how this whole like short printed late printing program kind of works that's what they talked about they said you know steer your readers towards this book this book and the next book we're going to talk about um as options for readers who you know weren't able to get some of those middle printings right which the next book that we're going to talk about is the sixth and final print for once in future number one Right, and you know, the the fifth print, the fourth print, the third print, the second print, those are all tough gets. But this one, you're able to grab at your LCS. They were they were open to order, um, they were kind of filled to order, and uh, there was a slight even overprint printed to make sure that stores could get their hands on them. Still a great cover. Um, still, I think great long term collectability. I think a lot of people are going to put together those six uh, cover sets, and. Uh, I think this is again. This was my long-term play of the week that we the the first print came out. I still think it's a long-term play. I think this book uh, has option ability written all over it. I think it's a big win for Broom. Uh, both of these two series is that you know something's killing the children and once in future. And again, we're already telling you be on the lookout for Folklore. It's coming soon, which has that same kind of buzz building for it. Right, and then the last book we have for the variant buzz section is. Ghost Rider number one. This is the variance for that, right? Right. So now this didn't have, say, strong enough reader buzz um, to include it in the reader buzz section. It did have some, but there were a few of these variants that I've seen reposted several times on Facebook. Of course, the um, design variant. The design variant where you see kind of the hoof for uh, Ghost Rider's foot. Um, that was talked about. You don't have it pictured. But one of the ones that also was heavily talked about is that all black blank variant. Oh, yeah. um, Absolute Carnage with the red 1 and 200 variant, I think, has started a legit trend of these colored variants. Again, shout out to one of our channel sponsors, Frankie's Comics, who's got that purple Joker of the Year, the villain variant, um, the, the all purple uh, blank cover. I think these covers are going to create some unique uh sketch variants uh you know i can just imagine a an artist what they can do with say like a white marker in that all black ghost rider cover it also reminds me i can't remember the number i want to say it's ghost rider 15 i'm probably wrong but that danny catch series from the 90s um there was a all black cover with like ghost rider's face in black kind of silhouetted in the back and that's what that all black cover to me reminds me of but I, I think that um, this is a series for Ghost Rider fans. Um, you get all three Ghost Riders kind of featured in this series. Um, I know some people are kind of down on Ghost Rider because the Hulu series got canceled. I would still say anything's possible. In Feige, we trust. I would not be shocked to see Ghost Rider or Ghost Riders showing up in the MCU at some point. Right. And... It doesn't have a lot of attention, just a, a personal opinion of mine. I kind of do like that Raza teaser variant, the, the one that's in the bottom left. Yeah, There's well, not I much do. to it. It's just, I just think it's a cool cover, especially the whole wraparound. I, I mean, they've killed us to death with the wraparounds, 
but I actually like that Raza teaser variant. Yeah, all these like great wraparound covers are going to make me get those like clear boards yeah. that they sell now where you can actually see the back of the book because that's my only pet peeve. I've talked about that before. Um, you get these wraparound covers, you can only see half of them. Yeah. Or get a graded one, like a like a 10-2 grade. Yeah, <laughs> so, so at least you can see the back. I'll tell you another thing I've seen is I've seen people frame two books next to each other yeah. with one flipped backwards. Yeah. Um, especially if you're talking about an inexpensive book, um, like the Immortal Variants or something like that. That looks pretty good. Yeah, some of those earlier sets, like the Justice League sets that had the the connecting covers. Or like the, you're seeing them with those connecting variants with the House of X, Power of X. But. Yep. And, yeah, I was kidding about 10 twos, by the way. I'm sure everyone. Don't go looking for 10 twos. <laughs> yeah, I'm an idiot. But that's going to wrap up the variant buzz section. And we're going to get into your long-term play. You ready to get into your long-term play? Let's do it. So let's bring up the long-term play, which is going to be. I saw this. I was happy to see it. I was, like, right on. And we're talking about Spider-Verse number one. This was kind of like my favorite book of the week especially going into it when i was doing my weekly picks just because i'm still on that high from the spider-verse movie my kids love spider-verse my kids love miles morales i was excited to see this see how they expand on that universe but i haven't been able to read it yet <laughs> so this one like i said this is this is cbsi Na- nation more importantly simpleman's comics family and the patreon family who really steered me towards this pick. I was struggling this week because going into this week, this wasn't a book I was really, if you go back and watch the last call show, I said that, you know, I don't know about this one. Yeah. It's a spider verse book, but, um, I don't know what this is going to add necessarily to the story. I don't know from a speculation perspective, what the belief is on this. Um, now the one thing is that, there's going to be different creators jumping on the book, creating different versions of spider characters, which at, and first sound didn't sound like, okay, well, that, is that going to be anything that sticks? But you got to go back and think about spider Gwen. Again, I've talked about this before, the organic nature of spider Gwen's popularity. That was a, basically a joke. Book. Um, a list was given to Jason Latour of like these spider versions of characters. And he got to pick one off the list and then write a story about it. And that turned into a character that is now beloved in the market. So anything can happen. But as I woke up this morning, I was a little behind with the Bolo list. So I had the list put together, but I didn't have a long-term play. And um, I had a late night last night, so I wasn't able to get it in last night. So I woke up very early this morning before getting my kids on the bus. Um, 5 a.m. 5 a.m. Carter Lee from you probably recognize in the chat if you're if you're watching the live show um and adam from strange tales to collect um uh the youtube channel who was on the hot and cold show last night are discussing the spider verse book and i said guys what what's up with this and they're talking about first appearances of course now that's what's going to get people's attention because (coughs) excuse me of course if you look at the top of the list, you see several first appearances listed. That's what I, I listed it as. Funny comment from somebody on uh, Facebook. Somebody asked who was several. Um, and when I, I do that because the graphic only has so much, so much space. But we have the first appearance of Spider Zero. First appearance of the Spider Monster, Lord Spider. Um, first appearance of like Spider Requiem, uh, V the Spinster. Um, so you get to see kind of some different spider uh characters um spider zero is popular with adam spider monster was popular with carter um so you kind of got a differentiating opinion but what really struck me about this book is how they continued some of like the renew your vows characters um renew your vows number one or renew your vows number 13 um in particular um they had some of our simpleman's comics Patreon members going back and grabbing back issues this morning and last night. Um, this so this book had people digging in those crates, digging in those, digging in those short and long boxes, looking for those uh, first appearances. And again, we've talked about this before, and you mentioned the high of the Spider Verse movie, and I talked about it when I talked about the J.J. Abrams Spider Man book. Um, Spider Verse characters, it's a wide open playing field because essentially, Brian, 
we're getting three different versions of a Spider-Man universe. We're getting an MCU version now, now that the deal has been done with Sony and the MCU. We're going to get a Sony version of the Spider-Man universe. And we have maybe the most intriguing version, which is the Spider-Verse itself in the animated universe. And typically, you know, I wouldn't be that big on animated uh, properties, but the first appearances that related to the original uh, Into the Spider-Verse movie did extremely, extremely well. So because of that, I think you cannot discount anything. And I think when you look at these characters, um, these new characters, again, it's a $4 crapshoot. You buy the book. You don't know if any of these characters are going to come into play or be used down the road. Um, it's too early to tell for sure. But this is a book. I like to highlight books in the long-term play of the week that are not on people's radar from a speculation perspective. It would be easy, right, for me to say long-term play is the Immortal Hulk Codex variant. Buy it for ratio and you'll make money. But it's unrealistic you're going to buy it for ratio. And we just, at the end of the day, with variants, we don't know down the road what they're going to be. That's an easy pick. Anybody can do that. What I try to do with these long-term plays is show you a book that you may be ignoring and that has an opportunity down the road to be something. For your $4, you're, you're into at each first appearance for like 75 cents. You know what I mean? So you have a shot with any of these for it to move the needle from a speculation perspective. And the, also the importance is what it does, again, for the back issues, which may not necessarily spark this individual issue per se, but only give credence to the importance of these Spider-Verse books and not to overlook these Spider-Verse books because Renew Your Vows is an example of a series that you know was so-so, had some attention, and then now no longer does. Um, and the characters from that series were are front and center in this book. Miles Morales is front and center in this book. Um, and I, I think that it really kind of goes to show that these Spider-Verse books aren't going anywhere. These characters aren't going anywhere. The vastitude of the, uh, the Spider-Verse is kind of infinite and will keep expanding. And who knows what we're going to see, um, whether it's animation, whether it's Sony-verse, whether it's MCU. I think anything's possible. And because of that, I think that these are always going to be solid plays. And Brian mentioned those discount um, sales. This may be a cover A pickup later on down the road at TFAW for 75% off. This may be one to keep your eye out for in that manner. Um, but nonetheless, it's one that has an opportunity in three to five years to kind of have a a play. But you never know. All it takes is Donny Cates taking over um, – Spider-Man, Amazing Spider-Man, and going, I really like this character, and I'm going to use him. So I like this as a long-term play, like more long-term play, longer than three to five years, only because when I first started talking about this, when we introduced your long-term play, we talked about my kids. Now, we talk, I talk about my kids, and I look at how I am. Most of my comic book hobbies nostalgia-driven. I like buying the stuff that reminds me of my youth that I didn't have the disposable income to get at that time. These kids that are seeing this Spider-Verse, you're going to watch Halloween's coming up. How many people are you going to see dressed as these type characters? What about when they get older down the road and then they start going back, looking at books like I do with like the Marvel Star books, like the Masses of the Universe, the G.I. Joes, the Transformers. This could play into that also where down the road people might be looking for this book. There might be a lot of them available. There might not be that many available. But for... Whatever the cover price is for a buy-in on it, it's worth picking up. I love the covers. I love the stories as it is, but pick some up, throw them away in a long box. I'll put these B-type books that I pass on to my kids. Is, I already have a short box for both my kids up there that's turning into a long box that I stash books in every now and then. So when they get of age, go, here you go. Here's a starter comic collection. Whether you want it, sell it, do whatever you want with it, but here's a starter collection. That's why I like a book like this, to put in those boxes for that type of long-term I think that's I think that's an amazing point, Brian. I think that I talk oftentimes about that three, five, seven year plan, and I say that most speculators don't have the patience to wait that long. I know most speculators don't have the patience to wait what you're talking about, that 10, 15, 20 year long game. But you're absolutely right because look at all of the purchases we make for our PCs these days, Brian. 
whether it's you with Masters of the Universe, whether it's me with G.I. Joe, we're trying to rebuy our childhoods. Yeah. That's absolutely right. And you have two children, I have two children, and our children are growing up right now with the Spider-Verse as being the most important piece of their you know, childhood comic knowledge and lore. Um, without a doubt, I, I, without a doubt, I think that there's going to be a whole generation of kids who grow up. Like this and, is going to be their Spider-Man. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and you know, whether it's singing uh, Post Malone and Sway <laughs> Lee or, uh, you know, wh- whatever it is. Um, I know you've told me a funny story about happening to, to stop playing the Spider-Verse yeah. soundtrack. You had oh, to my kid playing. like loves that What's Up Danger song. Yeah, you had to start playing Metallica in the car. Yeah, I told him it was the, the sequel soundtrack. <laughs> sequel soundtrack, right. Um, you know, so it's like that's that's the level of interest. And it's, this is that that's one of those movies that I can put on for my kids um, and at any moment know that, like, hey, if they're misbehaving, put on Spider-Verse. Yep. And they're going to sit down and, and be into it. And, you know, another – again, shout out to Adam, Strange Tales to Collect, who actually sent my kids the DVD copy of um, of this as a gift. We definitely appreciate that. So now on top of Netflix, if that ever goes away, we've got that hard copy. Um, but that's – I mean that's absolutely right. That's something I didn't even think about when I started talking about this play. And I think that um, that's a better point, Brian, than the one I made. I don't think a lot of speculators have the patience yeah. to do that. I don't think they'll hold that book anything yeah. 20 years but that's a great point yeah so yeah we're not all not all about speculation here but that's the long-term play and i want to thank jack for it because like i said i was super excited when i saw that on the list this week but with that being said that also is our bolo list for the week so i'll just bring it up here again in case people want to see the bolo list so we covered the first appearances we covered reader buzz variant buzz and then, of course we just talked about spider-verse but we got something coming up tomorrow. And we're going to be talking about Last Call, right? Absolutely. In the Last Call show, the pre-FOC show, we referenced it several times tonight during this show. It is our favorite show. It's the when Brian and I get to kind of unwind, um, do our thing, talk about previews. Look at these previews and see what books are coming up on final order cutoff on that upcoming Monday at 10 p.m. Eastern time. And just talk about what we're seeing, whether it's um, speculation possibilities, what books we, you know, we're really Jones into read, um, what the solicitations seem to be leading towards. We're talking a little indie books. We're talking big too. We try to give you a mix of everything. Last week we talked about local comic shop day, um, and again, the goal of that show is to aid publishers, to aid uh, creators, to aid LCSs, and to aid the collector as well as the speculator who feels like you know they need that information whether it's a foreign um collector or speculator that does not have access to these books on new comic day or uh, a new person who's not even familiar with the foc process um we're not buying up books and then talking about them the day after foc selling you on books we've already bought we're giving you the information as we see it in real time allowing you to make the same kinds of decisions and buy what you like the same way that we are. There's no gimmick to it. It's just real talk that we're having a couple of adult Kool-Aids. We're kicking back. We're unwinding at the end of the week. And we are sharing our knowledge with our community, which is what we love to do. Um, And no amount of down votes in that video are ever going to stop us from doing it because we love doing it. And we have really, I got to say, appreciated the overwhelmingly positive response to that video. A lot of people pay attention to the down votes, but the reality of the situation is so many of you have reached out and told us how much you appreciate that video and we hear you and it is why we continue to do it and are excited to do it every week. Every video, not everyone's not got like every video that's ever made or the, it, every video would be pretty much boring at that point. So people, different videos are for different audiences. Um, yes. I don't disvalue others' opinion. It's their right to down vote if thumbs down if they want. That's cool. But we're also here providing value to other people that enjoy that type of video. So that's why we make those. And what, like he said, we appreciate the comments and the support that we've gotten from that. But real quick, also, at the beginning of the show, we did announce that new comicbookinvest.com CBSI variant with Mad Cave Studios, that Woven Heart. There's the Trade Dress and the Virgin variant. And where can they find that? And what are the details real quick again, Jack? 
They can find it at comicbookinvest.com. Hit that variant tab. We've got 100 trade dress available for $17 plus shipping. Again, my light bag, halfback board, sticker of authenticity, individually numbered from comicbookinvest.com. We've also got um, 50 sets, which include the Virgin and the trade dress for $50. And those are available right now. Same thing, my light, halfback, sticker of authenticity, $2 going to uh, St. Jude's Children's Hospital, um, helping out an absolutely worthy cause. We're not just taking from the community. We're also trying to give back. And these, this book releases October 30th, just in time for Halloween. Um, awesome story and awesome cover by Mauricio Villanueva, who did our Knights of the Golden Sun, who did our Honor and Curse, who we are very happy to be working with and have some awesome future projects on the way with. And it's, of course... Tomb of Dracula number 10 uh, homage cover featuring the first appearance of Bra- Blade, excuse me, homage right there from Mad Cave Studios. New book from Mark London, who also, that's another thing that, that's important to point out. Mark London, the writer, is also the writer behind Knights of the Golden Sun, behind Honor and Curse, behind Battle Cats. Behind uh, Mad Cave Studios. <laughs> right. The man behind Mad Cave Studios exceptionally talented guy um and he's bringing us a little bit of horror now um from mad case you're so excited for that so um excited to bring that release it's available now it will not last long 150 copies um in the two individual price points um again it won't last long be sure to head to comicbookinvest.com hit that variant tab and go ahead and grab those variants now and there's a link to that variant in the description of this video so you can go check that right now and we want to thank everyone that's watched it before you go make sure you click that thumbs up button for us and if you haven't done so hit that subscribe and that bell notification so you'll be notified of future videos with that being said we wish you good night <laughs>